My name is Tegan and it is my intention for this podcast to share with you a fun story about what to do when you get feedback that uh, is perhaps a little bit challenging. So um, to begin with, thank you for joining me again. If this is the first time, then welcome. Uh, if you're listening again, then thanks for coming back and hanging out. Uh, I'll keep this trying, keep it short and sweet, <laughs> sweet mm, feedback being sweet. Okay. So it all started yesterday. Actually, it was this pretty recent story that, uh, I have a slot on the local radio station, TLC radio, the lower Clarence radio. And I've been doing it maybe for two months now on Tuesdays from 12 till two. And the cool thing about community radio is it's all volunteer based and it's pretty loose with what you can bring. Some people love to play jazz, metal. Some people like to talk about science. It's like a, a mixture, I guess, a tapestry of, of the local area. And it's, I like listening to it when I'm like driving into town and, and getting to know the things that are happening in the area as well. And um, so I was doing my show and <laughs> I've been just to play quick catch up here, I've been talking about how I want to get my own boat and sail to Lord Howe Island. And I've also started a blog, a vlog about this as well, which has been uh, a, a creative stretch. <laughs> and uh, I've got that on my YouTube channel. So if that interests you about having like an intention um, or an aspiration that you want to work towards, but you have no idea how you're going to do it. And it feels like there's lots of roadblocks or lots of things you have to learn along the way, then I invite you to join me on that journey. It's just on my YouTube channel. Just look for Teen Cook. Anyways, so back to the radio, I was on it and I do a mixture of playing music and then sharing some of my stories, much like I do here on this podcast. And I was talking about my next steps that I was taking towards getting a boat and playing around with the idea of, okay, well, if I want a boat to do this, what kind of boat do I need? And so I was talking about things like how big it would be, how many berths it would have, just doing a verbal vision board almost. And so we have, so you're in the booth all by yourself and it's actually really cute. It's in this replica of the lighthouse at Yamba. And so you have your little studio and they just leave you alone to, you know, to kind of flow with what, whatever it is that you want to present. And I've been talking for a little while and you have to kind of juggle. There is also like a phone they have there. So people can always add requests or give you a call and which is cool. And sometimes it's a little bit tricky to juggle being on air or playing music and then also answering the phone, I find. Uh, but so I was talking anyway about my boat adventure and uh, the phone kept ringing and uh, it's a little bit distracting. And while I was talking and it kind of kept ringing and I was like, oh, I'll just let it ring out. And then, you know, it's a lot easier to answer it when there's music playing. And so it just, I kept talking and it just kept ringing. And even one of the times I could picked it up and hung up like decline, like I can't do this right now. And it just kept ringing. So I was like, okay, I was on the radio. I was like, okay, guys, I've got to, this is very distracting. I've got to, I've got to just put some music on and I'll answer this phone and then I'll come back. I mean, I kind of like that in local radio. So it's kind of loosey goosey. And so I picked up the phone and I was like, TLC Radio, this is Tegan. And I had this person on the other end that was like, can you stop talking about this bullshit boat story and play some good music? And I went like into a mile, actually, frankly, a mild trauma response of I froze a little bit and then probably went into the nice girl archetype where, cause I was a bit confused and shocked. I didn't often when people call it's to, to share a bit of their story of what they relate to what I'm talking about, or it's to request a song. So he had said this and I was like, Oh, okay. And from my NVC training, <laughs> which is nonviolent communication, I echoed back to him what I'd heard. I was like, okay, so I hear that you don't, I hear that you, you're not enjoying my story and I hear that you would like some music played. And I asked him, what is your version of good music? 
Okay, I was genuinely curious because I was like, I'm sure if you don't like what I'm talking about, you probably don't like the music that I'm playing either. Well, and that was a story I told myself anyway. And <laughs> he just kind of grumbled more and then hung up. And I kind of sat there and was like, hmm, okay. okay. Uh, just thinking to myself and I've now been able to train myself to stop in that moment and feel into my body and when I sat there and I was feeling it there was like a, a like almost a, it felt like a withdrawal of the chest space and uh, a real like heavy energy on my shoulders and and my head I just wanted to make myself really small and I sat there and I felt into it and then this emotion kind of came up and and I would describe it as sadness and I sat there and and then as I really fell into it, I got a little bit teary and had a little bit of a cry. And because it was like, what, what just happened? What the? Okay. And I'd noticed in that moment and I tried to, so I, I allowed my body to react and was just with it and using my breath to connect with it more. And as I sat there, once the initial kind of shock went over me, uh, I often freeze, I think, in those moments as well. It's like everything kind of goes into shutdown. Uh, and once my mind started coming back online again and I was thinking into it, I was like, what just happened? <laughs> and there was a part of me, that old story, that was like, oh, I've done it again. Like I've been speaking up, I've been just talking too much and I really shouldn't just say anything at all. And it was kind of perfect timing because I'd actually changed the the name of my radio slot from Love and Boats to Soul Body because it felt more aligned as to the things that I wanted to talk about. And to get this feedback so like in your face, I was like, okay. And as I was sitting there and my brain clicked in, like I said, <laughs> see, I'm, obviously, I'm still feeling it like a little bit. I was like, um, hold on a second. I the cool thing with the radio station is that they let you do what you like. So I was like, I had never agreed to just playing music. I'd never agreed to talking about some things and not others. And so far the feedback that I've got from people that I've met that are like, Oh, you're taken from the radio has been quite positive. They've enjoyed the way that I've spoken and telling stories. And it, it just been quite positive, shall I say. And it's been really beautiful actually. And so then I, I kind of realized that I had this option of one, it was like, okay, I can just stop talking about it and just react to what this one person has said, or I can lean into it because I had probably a wave of shame come up. I can lean into it and I can share what is my experience because if you haven't noticed, one of my real values is truth and growth. And when I came back on the radio, I shared what had actually happened to me and kind of explained what had happened and what was going on in my body. And I also then kind of lent in this to sharing my experience about, I wondered one, how many times I've experienced this in my life where I felt like I've just been sharing my truth or sharing stories or just playing and having fun. And someone has come and just shut me down. And then I also wondered about where else people in their lives, who else out there had had this experience happen. And because I think that that's like an archetype or like an archetypal wound maybe about women, about the feminine of, of being in your playfulness, your juiciness and having, frankly, from lack of better words, the grumpy masculine come or grumpy man come and shut you down. And so I just continued to speak into it and I could still feel that my body was unsure about sharing it because, I, you know, the stories that run in your head of all well, the stories that run in my head of I shouldn't be sharing this either. I'm going to get in trouble from the radio station. I hope I'm not shaming this person in return because it's definitely not how I want to walk through the world of reacting and just shaming and yelling at other people. And I wasn't yelling. <laughs> uh, and really trying to take ownership of my role in that. And it was such a little like microcosm of, I guess, what I've experienced else in my life and knowing trauma, which is just a, 
a like a disturbance that doesn't have a resolution so a disturbance of the shock to my system of someone else's opinion or voice and me not supporting myself in it and so I decided to support myself in it like I said I spoke to it on the radio and it felt confronting because in previous situations I just wouldn't have said anything and I would have told myself the story that oh this is yucky my ego maybe would have told me the story that like it's better if I just don't make a thing out of it like it's it's almost better and oh (laughs) that it's the right thing to do maybe that it's a more evolved thing to do oh I don't like these words that are coming out but maybe that is something that ran through my head and as I I shared the story and then I went back to playing music and I actually had someone uh, call up and say hey I was actually really enjoying that story it was actually a younger man I was really enjoying your story and listening to it and yeah to keep telling it and I was like wow this was really beautiful. Thank you. And I I thanked them. I was like, you know, hearing this and the fact that you took the time to call up and let me know that it really meets my need of being seen and supported and heard. And so thank you. And, and then I also shared that then on the radio too. And it was amazing. A couple of people that are close to me also like listened to my little slot on there, you know, while they're at work and was like, what just happened? They're like, you're doing so well and keep it up. And And so I was like, cool, to have the polarity of the experiences of someone giving me their feedback that I didn't particularly ask for. And I also laughed because I'd realized I triggered them so much that instead of changing the radio station, putting on their own music, walking away, so many different other options that would have been, they called me up. I was just like, stop doing what you're doing. (laughs) And then just like hung up. It's like, wow. Okay, cool 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 so I journeyed that in my system and by the end of the like the two hours that I was on I was feeling good again I was playing some music that I felt you know that I was just enjoying singing along to and as I walked out of the booth I noticed some other people had come into the studio and one of them actually handed me a letter and I was like okay and he had a smile on his face and he was like look it's just feedback take it for whatever you want and so I read it and what I love is that I now have this person's name and email address <laughs> is that the message was from the email, please ask Tegan to chat less, love this station, but forced to change when she is on. And there's a part of me that thinks that this may actually be a second person and not necessarily the first person. And I was like, wow, <laughs> okay. The universe is really showing me something here and really giving me the opportunity to to listen, to learn, to grow. You know, if I'm not a victim here, what what can I take away from this? And it was actually something that Lady Gaga, I think, said once. Of, and often I hear people in very in positions of being very public, whether their music, their videos, their creative outlets, is the big thanks to those people who didn't believe that that they could do it because that made them stronger and gave them the energy to push through it and that was one of the things I took away from that afternoon was that like, you know what? I was just sharing my story. I was having some fun with it. I am allowed to have a voice and people are also allowed to have their voices too and their opinions. And can I have the space and capacity in my body to feel it all and to honor it all and take what feels good, listen to stuff, put other stuff down. So I was quite grateful. It's interesting though. I haven't completely shot, like shaken it off yet. I'm still processing it a little bit because yeah, like I said, this is probably a deep seated issue. And one of the things I noticed as well on reflection was that actually there was a part of me that was like, hold on, you don't get to speak to me like this. Like I didn't, you didn't own your experience. You didn't ask me if I wanted the feedback. You didn't even allow me to voice my side. And frankly that's not how I want to interact with people and this this fire this almost intensity this like clenching of the stomach almost and that broadening of the shoulders is 
I noticed that my ability to dance with the energy, maybe we would label as frustration or anger, is something I repress quite a lot. And I see this also in some of the people around me. And I guess I see it collectively as women too, that it just doesn't seem to be welcome and seems to be suppressed. Yet if I take the labels around what is good, bad, which emotions are good and bad, right and wrong, it's shown me as well that maybe this is something I need to embody a little bit more and to set my boundaries and to give myself permission to raise my voice if I want to, to get more stern if I want to, of like, hold on a second. Just if you want to speak to me, you ask if I'm up for a conversation. And not that I then felt like I had to go back to this person and be like, stuff you. It was more just reminding me that, you know, as I share my story, because it is quite vulnerable, even sharing music, like my choice of music on the radio is vulnerable. Doing these podcasts is vulnerable. Doing the vlog is vulnerable. As I share my story, my intention behind it is to, to support and empower other people on this journey and to have have fun and give myself permission to do it in the way that feels creative to me. And with that vulnerability, I need to make sure that I have got my own back. And that may mean listening to people's feedback and just feeling it in my body and holding myself in that, or it may, may be in the future of like not answering the phone while I'm talking on the radio. So it gave me a really cool opportunity to feel into maybe the muscles that I need to strengthen when it comes to opening myself up and the way that I'm going to trigger people because I've definitely triggered the people around me a lot. I trigger myself a lot and knowing that when I make things more public that I'm going to trigger it in them as well and still see the beauty in that of growth not only for me but for them and trust that what is coming through me and what I feel drawn to do is serving a purpose and looking at all the colors <laughs> that may be included in that purpose. So that was my fun little story today. Uh, I, hope, <laughs> I hope maybe you can relate to it in some way. Is there somewhere in your life where people have, you know, said, Oh, I don't like that to maybe a new idea you've shared with them or have criticized you and just dropped information and then kind of ran away. And I think old Tegan would have reacted to that and would have been like played the victim and blamed that other person. And I'm so grateful for the work that I've done to be able to move through that and also take the learnings from it for myself and also like laugh it off sometimes like, okay, okay. I'm not here to please everybody. I'm not here for everybody to like me. And that is okay because frankly, I don't like everybody either. Like there are some radio stations that I don't like listening to. There's music I don't like listening to at this point in time. And I know as I evolve and change and that may too, some people don't like olives and then they really like olives. <laughs> so my heart goes out to this dude where I must have triggered him so much. I wonder if he also had like a dream and a desire to do something like I'm doing. And I almost intuitively felt like, oh, I wonder if he's surrounded by women who talk to him or at him all the time and giggled at that thinking well maybe you need to set some boundaries in your life I don't know maybe the boundary of the off button if you don't like what it is that you're hearing so and it reminds me um, a friend of mine her grandmother uh German lady would be like if you don't like it don't look at it <laughs> which I'm like yes like knowing that who you are and what you are in this moment and all the moments that follow that it's it's safe to express these things if you can hold yourself in it and, and just really own who you are and allow yourself to evolve and grow. And sometimes these learnings are really transparent, hence this podcast, hence the radio station. And I think that that's how we learn. I love it when people share their stories. So I invite you to maybe share some more of who you are and what's going on in your life with the people around you and not for the purpose of being necessarily acknowledged or agreed with, but just to celebrate the form of expression, using your voice, using your body, using your words, using maybe your songs, maybe using your pictures, your paintings, your, your spreadsheets, who knows what your creative outlet is. So 
thanks for joining me today on my little story and I'm sending you big love and you know subscribe to the podcast and I will tell you some more little stories along the way if you're up for it so uh, eye to eye heart to heart hopes and dreams truth and honesty love and compassion out to you all thanks for being here